Okay, hello and welcome to the channel. This is going to be a hopefully pretty quick video just talking about something that um, new people aren't going to be too familiar with. So I'm assuming there's quite a lot of new people joining in Blender 3.0 um, and this is really explaining how 3D works. So if you want a quick uh, explanation of the buttons for this then it's literally just control A to apply scale and the object settings are all in here and you just read through them and you can apply the transformation to its data is what it says um, but my well the point of this video is like what does that really mean and it's kind of also a response to uh, Andrew Price's video where um, he doesn't have the time to explain this sort of stuff um, so I thought I would jump into it and explain it myself as well um, and we'll get a little bit more into uh, you know why applying scale breaks things um, and what it breaks and what it actually all means. Um, so I'm going to add a cube oops, a cube, and I'm, uh, I'm assuming that you've followed at least a few tutorials, maybe not Andrew Price's series, or do I do advise the 3.0 uh, donut series that he just released um, because he explains everything really well but it doesn't explain, again, the, the why things work the way they do. Um, so hopefully you found this video if you were interested in that sort of thing. And it is, again, for people that don't understand 3D. Um, so in other software, the, the name of this sort of thing is called resetting the X form. Um, and really all it is, is that the object has a bunch of uh, local data that's stored inside it. So if I run away and start rotating this sort of stuff that you're sort of familiar with, I can end up in a situation like this where it's all over the place. Um, which I'll scale it like that as well, which you just saw me do something that uh, relies on this data. Um, but if I apply another cube and I'm in edit mode and I start doing those same location things, um, which I will do in a different way just because uh, you know, I know what's going on with this. So I've done a very similar thing there. I've done, I've done it in two different ways. This one here, I, I, you don't need to know everything that I did. But what, but the idea of what I was doing was that I, I rotated and did all that stuff in object mode on this one, and edit mode on this one. And we can already start seeing the issues here, um, that are coming around. Um, so the one that I rotated in edit mode. It, it's it's lost all of that information and it's just like if I start rotating this now it's not it's not what I'd expect and if I start scaling it then it's going off that way this one over here I can start rotating it and scaling it and it's all good um, I wish I had screencast keys on for this but I couldn't find one that works for 3.0 so apologies for that um, but anyway so these are messed up um, over on this one and for this one you might not even necessarily want it to be like that um, so there's a lot to sort of cover there that it's minor stuff, but when you're really getting into it, you start looking at this stuff all the time. And uh, and I do have a another video that's called uh, the Complete Snapping Guide, which does explain this in more depth as well. Um, so what we've got here is a, a locally rotated object, and all the information that we're looking at is held in this Transform uh, tab on the right, and we can actually see how that's working. So we can see that the location is, you know, all exactly where it over there. Uh, we can see the rotation is, you know, these numbers over here. Um, and the scale is slightly more complicated. We've got a, a base scale of it being 111, or what would initially be 111, and now it's 1112. And that doesn't refer to the actual scale of the object in dimensions, because that's what the dimensions section is for. Um, these are more of like a multiplier of what the base values are. So if this cube had been 5 meters, then we would be doing 2.4 times 5. Uh, the initial cube here was 2 meters, as we can see by these values aren't touched. Um, and that's why 2.4 in the scale value is 4 meters 0.8 on the uh, Z dimensions for this object. Um, so all this data is like is held locally if you're doing it in object space. And the thing about that is that sometimes that can cause issues. Um, so 
and that's why the resetting the X form is causing issues. I mean, um, there's two types of issues here. There's the issues that if you edit it in edit mode and you move something far away, um, then things on the location and rotation end up at zero. And that's really annoying um, because you get all those issues that I mentioned with scaling and rotating being no good. Um, so we'll talk about fixing that. Um, but the scale on that one's actually fine because it's remained at, at 1, 1, 1, which is what you want. Um, no matter what the dimensions are, keeping it at 1, 1, 1 is, is the ideal in that scenario. Uh, for, most, for the most part. Um, and then this one here, we've got all these funky numbers that I mentioned. So what we could start doing now is clicking into this section, pressing 0. And you can see that actually this... Um, this object has just returned, uh, oops, sorry, that one's got to be one. You can see that the object here has just returned exactly to back how it was before I started, which can be useful uh, sometimes. Um, but instead of going through that and pressing 000, what I can actually do instead that's quicker is just press backspace over it, which can be useful, um, and that will reset them all. Um, but the actual way that I suggest that you do it would be um, we know that the G key is move the object, R key is rotate the object, and S is scale. Well, if I press Alt G, then it's going to reset that to zero. And if I press Alt R, it's going to reset that to zero. And Alt S is going to reset. So that's the quickest way of doing it. Um, and then besides that, as mentioned, sometimes you don't want that to be uh, the way that it is. And you want the scale to be 111 even though you've edited it outside of object mode, uh, in object mode even. Um, and in that case, I can press Control A to apply the uh, scale in this case. Um, and that's going to keep things nice. And, and why wouldn't, you know, and why do I want to do that? Well, if I look in edit mode here and I start subdividing this, which I know I'm going through fast on that sort of stuff, but it's not the main... It's not the main focus of this video, but as we can see, the 2.4 scale is actually multiplying on my UI here. And when I start sculpting, things are not, it's just not the right shape. I, I want a circle, right? I want to sculpt with a circle. That's, uh, uh, that's how you would expect it. If I go on this axis here, then that's right. And then it gets all stretched. Um, and that's because the scale is funny. So you'd have to reset and apply the scale right here uh, to keep things nice and circular like this. Um, and that's pretty much what, that's, that's one of the most common ways that that's gonna cause an issue. Um, but what we don't wanna do is press Control A and apply the location or rotation most likely. Because if I were to do that, then I wouldn't have access to the local transforms, which would allow me to move this along the Z, along the X, on the local, which for a cube object like this, or any technical design, uh, is really important, especially with rotation as well. So if I go back to global and I rotate this, and I press X twice, then I'll start rotating it on the local X. Rotate it on the local Z, you know, we get that sort of barrel roll going on, which is the same that we can do here, just pressing R and Z. Um, and that's kind of, that's important. We don't want to lose that. So if I apply this, the rotation now, then I haven't got access to that anymore. Like I can't, there's no way I can barrel roll this object without looking like directly down it and just sort of doing it by eye and being like, and that's not what I want. Like that's all messed up. Oops. Yes, that's not what I want. Um, so I wouldn't advise applying the rotation. And same goes for location. Sometimes you do want to apply it, um, depending on what software you're using. But do I really want my origin point to be over there? Not, not really, because then I start rotating and it's weird. I start scaling; it's all over the place. Um, so that's kind of how that messes you up. Um, separately, to fix these, some of these issues, fixing the rotation really, really difficult. Um, I don't think I have enough time to go into that. It's kind of like a kind of an eyeball it or use a different object and sort of patch things together. Um, it's quite difficult, but fixing the location at least is quite easy. You can turn off um, somewhere in here. You can turn off 
uh, yeah, there it is, just affect origins only. So when I start moving this, uh, I'm moving the origin to somewhere that I want. We can combine that with snapping perhaps to vertex and I'll snap that to this corner here and maybe that's what I want. That's one way to try and fix it. Uh, that takes a little bit of manual uh, bit of labor. Uh, the other one, which I'm actually uh, forgetting, is um, oh yeah, it's, it's it's on the W context menu and it's set origin to um, wherever you want it. In this case, I kind of probably want it at the uh, the or uh, not the, not the geometry moving, but can set the origin to geometry, and that's going to move it right to the center. Um, there's more options there, for example, the cursor. I've got the cursor in a, a position that I want it to be in, and then I set origin to 3D cursor, and that's what's going to happen. And we can fix that in that way, uh, but really editing and moving something like that is going to be causing you quite a bit of work to fix, um, and that's kind of just everything about the importance of the uh, X form, it's called, or applying the scale, location, uh, and rotation. Um, so I hope that was useful. I want to release more videos, so this has been just a little uh, fun video to make, but if you've got any ideas of something that you're struggling with or something you want to understand, then um, I'd be happy to take those uh, in the comments, and I'll get to them as if it's not just easily explained with a quick response. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next one.